All right, so here we want to calculate the mass of the precipitate that is formed when 177.2 milliliters of a 1.25 molar sodium chromate solution is mixed with 250.0 milliliters of a 1.25 molar silver nitrate solution. So this is solution stoichiometry. We have a reaction happening in solution between the two reactants, sodium chromate and silver nitrate. In order to do the stoichiometry, of course, first we need a balanced equation. So let's go ahead and write that down first. So we have sodium chromate aqueous plus silver nitrate aqueous. We'll draw our yield sign and now we need to get our products. So in an earlier video I showed you how to perform the double displacement reaction to get our products. So what we'll do here is we'll write some sodium ion but instead of a chromate we'll write a product with nitrate ion. Now I'm writing the ions and we need that in order to get our products. So balance the charges plus one and minus one. Of course the formula is just NaNO3. If you go to the solubility rules you'll see that this is aqueous. Our next product we'll write silver ions but instead of the nitrate we'll write chromate. Now you'll notice something a little bit different here. The charges do not balance so in order to write a formula we'll have to balance these charges so for that we'll have two silver Ag2 and one chromate. If you go to the solubility rules you'll find that chromate is insoluble so we'll write S for solid when chromate binds to silver. Next, to do our stoichiometry, we need a balanced equation. So we'll go ahead and put our coefficients here. I'll refer you to an earlier video or earlier to balance equations. So here we've got two sodium and on the product side we have one sodium. So I'll start by balancing the sodium ions. We'll put a two here and then you notice that that changes our moles of nitrate. Two moles of nitrate. We also have two moles of silver here so we can balance the silver and the nitrate by putting a coefficient of two here. So now we have a balanced equation. And we know what our precipitate is and that's what we're looking for. As we've studied stoichiometry before, we know that in order to do this, in order to solve, we need to know our limiting reactant. Sometimes the limiting reactant is given to us, other times it's not. In this case, we don't know which is the excess or limiting. It's not given to us. So this is an example where we have to go find the limiting reactant. The method that we've talked about before is taking each reactant, converting to the product, and then finding out which produces the smallest amount. That will be our theoretical yield. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So for our sodium chromate, we have 177.2 milliliters. Let's convert that to liters first. We'll convert to the moles using the molarity, 1.25 mole of sodium chromate for every one liter. Then we can do our stoichiometric step. We can convert to our product, the one we're interested in, silver chromate and cancel mole of the sodium 
chromate. The mole to mole ratio here from the balanced equation, one mole of sodium chromate produces one mole of the silver chromate. And finally, I'll go ahead, since we're looking for mass, I'll go ahead and convert to the mass. So the molar mass I've already calculated. You can find this on your periodic table. Go find the mass for two moles of silver, one mole of chromium, and four moles of oxygen. And then we get the molar mass of 331.74 grams of silver chromate per mole. Okay, so if you check the units, you see all the units cancel, and we get a number here, and the number I get is I'll go to three significant figures because our molarity right here is in three significant figures, which is our uh, the fewest number of significant figures. So 73.5 grams of the silver chromate can be produced. So this is the amount that can be produced, assuming that our sodium chromate is the limiting reactant. Now we don't know that, we have to test our silver nitrate. So let's do the same thing with our silver nitrate solution. For silver nitrate, we start with 250.0 milliliters. I'll convert to liters. Uh, notice the molarity is exactly the same. So now that we've converted to moles, we can go convert to the product. And so we're interested in silver chromate. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be silver nitrate. And the mole to mole ratio here, two moles of silver nitrate react to produce one mole of the silver chromate. Since we're interested in our mass produced, notice this last step is exactly the same. And when we do our calculations, we see that the mass produced here, 51.8 grams of the silver chromate can be produced. So we have two answers here. And so what does it mean? 73.5 grams of silver chromate can be produced from 177.2 milliliters of the sodium chromate solution, if this was the limiting reactant. If the silver nitrate is limiting reactant, 250 milliliters could produce 51.8 grams. Now you might be wondering, this has a larger volume, so why does it produce fewer? Well, of course, you can see in the stoichiometric ratio, it takes two moles. So even though we have a larger volume, it takes two moles to produce one mole of our solid. And so the smallest value, our smallest yield is our theoretical yield. So we've answered the question. First, we've answered that silver nitrate, our solution of silver nitrate is limiting. The sodium chromate is in excess our limiting reactant limits how much product we can get. And what we can say here is that 51.8 grams of our solid silver chromate is our theoretical yield.